Hello everyone, great to be here. Before I start, let me ask you a question. Who of you is representing non-gaming apps in the audience? Wow, quite a lot, so one third? All right, so even though AppAgent is a growth and strategic agency for games, 95% of what I will show you also applies to non-gaming, so don't be worried. Let me start with uh, the state of the industry. There's a huge market saturation. It's very difficult to cut through the noise. And because of the attribution, we have difficulties to attract the right players that will pay in our games or in the apps. And due to recent layoffs and different changes in structures of internal teams, there's also many new challenges, how to operate, how to really be on the same page. And even though I don't have a magic pill for you, I do believe that a solid creative strategy can really help you to mitigate uh, these issues. I will guide you through our own process at AppAgent, step by step, very openly, sharing with you a lot of examples from our presentations and results. So it's sort of a cookbook, and I hope that it will inspire you how to apply this for your own uh, business. Why am I speaking about this topic? Well, I've studied marketing communications, then I entered ad business uh, when I joined Leo Burnett, one of the biggest ad agencies, and spent there about seven years uh, before I went on the other side to mobile and started developing my own apps and games. So for the next five years, I developed apps and games myself, and then combined these two careers together and uh, launched AppAgent as the agency is helping companies such as Supercell, Metacore, Good Game Studios, or Scopely, with all things mobile growth. Let's get into uh, the process itself. Maybe you wonder what actually a creative strategy is. So it's a way how to align with your marketing, creative, and product people on how you want to communicate your game and to whom. So it's sort of a North Star, and it has many shapes and forms. But typically, there's a description who is your target audience, how your uh, competition communicates, uh, what creative directions you want to explore, how you apply ideas and add creatives to different channels, as well as what's your iteration strategy, uh, maybe how you're going to test those creatives. So it's sort of a manual that helps teams to have a clear path forward and have some structured approach and being aligned. So that's, in a nutshell, what Creative Strategy stands for. And it starts with research. So first, the audience research, where I'm still surprised these days how often I see just basic demographic description of uh, players, age, location, maybe a bit more details. But what really matters is what we use in our approach, and that's motivations. Why people should play your game, what they find exciting about it, um, what are the best moments they love, and those pillars help you to really tailor the communication towards your target audience. And to understand them more like holistically, it's also good to look at some trends uh, that these people, this audience, follows, and uh, that could be on Netflix, some new show. It could be uh, current trending actors or musicians, their producers. Even, you know, uh, people such as Benson Boone, who started as a TikTok star, then got to American Idol just to drop off and move back to TikTok, or just following the hottest trends on social media. And these culture influences can really help you to be relevant timely and you know connect with your audience through something that resonates with them speaking of that uh, we also find very helpful digging deep into communities be it on discord reddit uh, maybe even facebook groups uh, for some types of apps and games and what's great about it that not only that you understand what people like about your product but also how they speak in some cases how they play the game differently than you expected. You know, there could be lots of like memes or ideas, uh, jokes that you can extract and use in your communication. And I will show you one example for Clash of Clans in the last section of the presentation. 
So community scan, super vital source of inspiration, especially when you want to be highly relevant to your audience. Then competitors. You can learn a ton by looking deep into your competition. What I mean, mean by that, it's not about like copying what they do, but really understanding the principles, like what's behind those best performing creatives, opening hooks, uh, what actually is like the strategy uh, that the competitor is using that you can apply, maybe even a style of ads, messaging, like really seeing the patterns. And if I speak about patterns, we are looking usually through multiple sources, such as Aptica, TikTok library, uh, Meta creative library, and we break those creatives in like three sections, hook, core, and end card, tag them, and then we look, you know, what they have in common. And by that, you spot these patterns, and then you can make some conclusions and apply them in your ideation process. So that was audience, competition, and then, of course, you should look into your own creatives. And obviously, you look, first and foremost, how much you are spending on uh, those top performers, like which are the creatives that drives the most of the spend. Uh, there was already mentioned about IPM and CTR in the previous presentation. But what I find particularly interesting with our creative team is uh, the data you can get specifically on Meta, which is the hook rate and hold rate, which stand for the opening sequence and the middle part of the ad creative, because there you can understand what are the best opening parts that you can use for maybe also other creatives, and what, let's say, core of the ad creative keeps people engaged. And then you can like combine these two, if they are best performing, into some new ad creatives. And we will tackle iterations in the last section, so I'll speak about this more in that part. So, it might seem to some of you that research is a waste of time, but it can't be less true, because that's a starting point that helps you to really be on the right path and helps you to go the right direction. So that was about research. But how do you translate that into ideas. Well, before we get into the actual ideation process, it's good to align internally what the mix of different ad creatives should be like. And we are using something that we call creative strategy pyramid, which explains, you know, certain say, principle, which types of assets should be produced at which volumes. That's how it looks like. So at the very bottom, the easiest to produce are direct copies. And I don't mean guys like frame by frame. I hate this. I'm speaking about copying the principles, the things that are behind the actual visual. This is quite a straightforward path to have also good performance with your own creatives. But as you can see here, on the bottom, this gives you quite a high certainty of success, but the longevity and also the potential for like big creative break breakthrough is very limited. So then you move to basic iteration creative, where you change some element, be it the character in the opening sequence, gameplay, uh, music, whatever. But you keep the creative pretty much intact, just vary some elements of it. Strategic creative is what we call like original ideas based predominantly on this research. So that's uh, where you start to be more original, and then you move to reference creatives based on those influences from social media, movies, music, you name it. And at the very top, like cherry on the top, are blue ocean ideas, like crazy shit, excuse my French, which actually can make you stand out from the crowd, cut through the noise, really make the difference. But those should be like a few, while you know you just develop the whole production pipeline based on certain let's say framework that i've just presented let's say you are clear on this internally and you need to move to ideation as already mentioned so creative directions is where you should start these are not concepts still that's like a theme you know some uh let's say um, area of focus which could be about certain messaging certain type of execution mechanic, narrative, whatever. Here you can see example from uh, one of uh, our clients. If you are smart, you might guess which of the games is that. Um, and uh, this gives 
the ideation team uh, some boundaries. And within those boundaries, they then develop several creative concepts, three minimum, but ideally more. So you really test this direction from multiple angles. I don't rely on one false positive or false negative. So if you have six, 10, 20 different creatives in a certain direction performing well, that confirms the direction is good to pursue uh, even more, while uh, vice versa. And this is maybe too brief, right? So uh, we develop it in the next step into a bit more granularity, explain you know, what's behind this direction, uh, what are the motivators behind it, and also where this will be applied in terms of channels and formats. The ideation itself could be broken down into three parts. The hook, first three to five seconds, the core of the ad, and the end card. And each idea maker should be thinking about these uh, parts like distinctively, but it needs to be like one cohesive story, of course. And uh, when you are developing a concept, then you should keep all of these parts in mind when you are writing a script. So how I will capture the attention? What will be the main story, the main message? The one thing I want to get to people's minds and how I will end the whole narrative so it connects everything together. And as you can see, you know, we have uh, some overall description of the idea, example of the script, how it will be executed, some reference uh, visually. By the way, Midjourney is amazing to really illustrate the style and the tone, the feeling. So we are very often using uh, AI for uh, illustrating concepts and to keep ourselves and our partners uh, aware of where we are heading in terms of motivations. It's always on that slide with the concept itself. So what makes a great ad? I would say five main things. The first one, it needs to be simple. We have seen thousands and thousands of ads, and I love this example that I was given years ago when one guy threw at me five balls at the same time, literally, threw balls at me. How many I caught? One, exactly. And the same is when you are talking to your audience. One thing, please, otherwise people won't get anything. Next, give extra care to hook, the opening part. And we will give extra care to hook in the next section because that's the whole section I want to um, present in a minute or two. Then over communicate, zoom into your gameplay or into your app UI, remove what's not critically important. Just keep it easy to understand. Make the gameplay objective or app objective, the use case, the benefit super clear, like remove every distraction. And last but not least, create custom end cards so everything connects together. You know, like the idea that you present should be linked uh, by the end card together. And you will see in a few examples uh, in the last part of the presentation what I mean by that. So these are, let's say, five key principles. We have done research, how to ideate, let's move to the hook itself, because that's what can make or break your creative. It's probably the single most important element. Why? There's so much noise out there, and I guess that you as well, when you scroll through Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you, if you're frank to yourself, you have a very short attention span. Two, three, four seconds. And uh, we have done some analysis to really like prove this hypothesis, analyzed our own ad creatives, and learned that after four seconds, just four seconds, people typically stop watching, unless you have a really cool message to deliver, unless the hook really works. So this is the critical part, and if you should iterate something, it's those four, those four seconds. And uh, as you can see here, uh, on the left there's a master, and the very different hooks on the right. And I will let you guess which of these perform the best. It was surprising to us that the easiest, simplest, and probably most strange concept on the very right perform the best. It's done by large with mid-journey, some simple animations, but that black and white hook worked by far the best. So uh, it was mentioned in the previous talk, 
we marketers very rarely uh, have a good uh, clue what will work. <laughs> it's like that. No matter you are 20 years in the marketing, you have no idea. So what makes a great hook? Uh, straight to the point, you have very limited time, and I'm always telling my team, imagine your customer commuting to work in a tube, the wagon is shaking, they are watching the phone, and they need to get what you are telling them. So in very like, difficult conditions, people still need to get uh, why they should keep watching. Uh, movement, it's quite obvious, because like, especially men were hunters, our eyes are focusing on movement uh, of a wild pig, so anything that's moving, camera zooming in, zooming out, uh, text moving, explosion, that captures the attention. Curiosity. If you're watching YouTube or even TikTok videos, you can learn a ton from influencers who are so great at giving you this hook at the beginning so you keep watching for the next half an hour. Humor works always the best, and in the case of um, hooks, I even uh, suggest you create these what the fuck moments, shock people a bit, but I don't mean like being rude or showing something that's you know, out of boundaries, uh, but really be thinking what actually can stop people scrolling. And use all the tools. It's not just about visuals, it's about sound effects, voiceovers, text layovers, like use all the technique to stop people scrolling. If you have something good to say, of course. That was about the perfect hook. And let's move to the last part about iterations. So why iterations? Uh, it might be shocking to you, but I see that lots of companies, even big studios, are for whatever reason primarily focusing on so-called net new creatives. And the whole idea of our business is to extend the lifetime of a best performing creative. Get the most out of it, you know, spend millions behind one creative. And that could be done only if you iterate. And there's many ways how you can iterate, uh, and I will speak about them in a second, because I feel people see iterations as like one thing, but there's multiple approaches uh, that have different, let's say, roles and effect. So we have this little iteration framework. Not surprisingly, it starts with hook iterations. There should go most of your efforts. Then there's basic iterations where you alter elements such as character, uh, gameplay, uh, the let's say app use uh, capture, and then advanced iterations where you are keeping the same let's say principle, but you are changing uh, maybe order of scenes, uh, even art style. Uh, some new elements are added or even removed, but the core idea is still there. And what we recommend and follow is this distribution. Let's say you have six creatives a month. Three of those creatives, I mean iterations in this particular case, three of those should be hook iterations, two basic, and then one advanced. This is the golden ratio for each package of iterations that we recommend to do. So practically, how these three types of iterations uh, could look like, actually two as I can see, but never mind. So this is for Clash of Clans. Interesting story about this creative, just to like conclude to, uh, on what I just said. Um, we work for Supercell for maybe four years now. And you can imagine that working for a game that's 13 years on the market for a couple of years means that you face creative fatigue as idea makers. So we did quite a comprehensive research and in one of the forums, we have discovered through this community scan that there's two types of players, audience, see? One, competition, one, base building. So some audience loves building their base and loves this like creation process, less than destruction and competition. And based on that insight, we developed a concept called relax, which is focusing on this building aspect of Clash of Clans. That's the one on the left where you can see a time lapse of the base being built and how it's then leveling up from Town Hall 1 to Town Hall 14. And it's sort of like nice to watch, right? And then you move to 
basic iteration. And we have seen also in one of the forums that people do these like silly jokes with walls, making some messages and even objects, icons. Uh, so we made a basic iteration that you can see has very much like similar aspects. But it's just another version of the original one. And in the advanced iteration, we used another trend that's very like frequent now with the cat, uh, with the paw. And you know, that's like another way how you can refresh the creative in some compelling way and connect it with the gameplay, you know, with leveling up the town hall. So from one master, we've created now dozens of iterations using this principle I just told you. So how to put everything together? You put it in a testing roadmap. You define uh, typically three months uh, of testing, which assets, in what direction, in what format you're going to test. And this is about the alignment I mentioned at the very beginning. You know, having a clear uh, plan between creative team, UA team, and eventually also product team, because here could be also some events, uh, special uh, content being promoted, and uh, then everyone is on the same page. You know what you are testing, you are learning together, you are collecting the data, and then in the next sprint, you are seeing better results. So this creative strategy that I'm explaining today should be revised and refreshed, usually about every three months. Uh, if you have, let's say, a more um, like older game, it could be once half a year, but things change quite rapidly, so it's better to uh, look into all these building blocks uh, quite frequently. So that was pretty much all I wanted to share. And just to conclude on the very beginning, I do believe that if you have a solid strategy, if you have clear audience uh, definition, if you have some strong ideas and you know how to test them, then you can cut through the noise. You can also attract new audience segments because those, those creative directions help you to address completely new segment of players by talking to them with topics they like, they enjoy, that are relevant to them, and also as was just mentioned, it helps you to align internally. What's the result of this? We are typically seeing a winner ratio, so finding high-performing creative at 1 to 10. Usually it's 1 to 20 or 1 to 30 these days. So with this approach, you will see winners twice or three times more than if you are just doing random stuff. Let's say that you have these creatives ready for testing, so if you want, you can continue by downloading the creative testing guide that we have developed with uh, people from uh, Scopely, Small Giant Games, Zynga, Applav, and other experts, and it shows how then this should be all properly tested. So time for Q&A, either now, or you can drop me a message on email. Happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Peter, for great presentation.